Welcome everyone to a very, very special day for Harvard. This is a special day for us all because it's a day that will enable us to chart the future with bold confidence and enhanced ambitions. This is a special day because it will provide Harvard's newest school, less than a decade old, with the firm foundations we have strived to build as we have witnessed engineering grow so dramatically, expanding its presence and its importance to students and faculty across the university and to the world beyond Harvard's walls. This is a special day because gathered here are individuals from all of Harvard, not just from the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, but from so many other parts of the university as well. People assembled because they believe in the necessity for a strong engineering presence at Harvard and because they have done so much to bring us to this moment. A very special and heartfelt thanks to Nithin Noria and his colleagues at Harvard Business School for their exemplary efforts on behalf of one Harvard. But most <laughs> But most importantly, this is a special day because we are here to mark and celebrate an extraordinary act of philanthropy and an extraordinary philanthropist. It is my great honor and joy to announce that Harvard Business School alumnus John Paulson has made to the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences the largest gift in Harvard's history. $400 million to ensure that engineering at Harvard will be now and for all the years to come a force for excellence, innovation, and world bettering discovery. In honor of his remarkable generosity, C's will henceforth be named the Harvard John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Cheer. <laughs> Only two and a half months after I began my term as president in 2007, I announced the official establishment of C's as a school. Today, I'm privileged and thrilled to see it launched into a new chapter, a new era of strength and accomplishment made possible by this astonishing gift. A special day for a special school an engineering school that collaborates across the breadth of the university with medicine, design, law, business, public health, policy. An engineering school that offers the largest undergraduate course in the college and welcomes English concentrators as enthusiastically as computer programmers to its classrooms. An engineering school that believes it must stand at the core of the liberal arts and the core of the education of every 21st century citizen. An engineering school that confronts the most pressing problems of our time, inventing regenerative fuel cells, to addressing the carbon balance in major ecosystems, to helping the disabled to walk, to designing self-assembling robots, to developing new forms of minimally invasive surgery, to pioneering biomolecules for new diagnostics, to redefining digital privacy. The Harvard John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. There are no limits to what it will do for and with its students and faculty. For Harvard, for the world. John, there are no words adequate to thank you. 
except to say that on this special day, we can see into a future that you are making real for all of us and for so many others who will be the beneficiaries of your stunning generosity. As we envision this school, its talented students and faculty, as we envision its new space in Alston, as we envision its discoveries and contributions to a brighter and better world in the years to come, we are proud to associate it with the name of the visionary individual who has made this magnificent commitment to our hopes and dreams, to the realities that lie ahead for the Harvard John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Seas, Harvard, and the world are deeply and eternally grateful to you. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Edgerly Family Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Sciences and the John H. Finley Professor of Engineering and Applied Sciences, Michael Smith. Thank you, Drew. I am so glad to be here today to celebrate this gift. I didn't mean to say something funny. Um, <laughs> that will shape the future of Harvard and benefit generations to come. This is a landmark day for Harvard University and especially for the Harvard, let me get this right, Harvard John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Thanks to Mr. Paulson, we can now propel this school into the ranks of the 21st century leaders in engineering and applied sciences. His generosity will enable students and faculty from all Harvard schools to harness the power of engineering and applied sciences to address the greatest challenges facing society. His phenomenal act of philanthropy is just that, phenomenal. At Harvard, we engage the most critical fields of endeavor for society. As you heard, our C's faculty are solving big complex problems on the frontiers of translational, translational life sciences, computational science and engineering, energy, environmental science, robotics, nanophotonics, nanoelectronics, just to name a few. And the C's faculty do so in the context of broad excellence across the many disciplines of arts and sciences and of Harvard. In this we are immensely aided by the regional strength of Boston. The work of our faculty and students is amplified immeasurably through connections to Harvard's myriad professional schools, our proximity to other high-powered institutes and affiliated teaching hospitals, and Boston's thriving biotech, life sciences, and high-tech communities. SEAS has always been a unique place to pursue one's best work. And today, that unique place just got supercharged. The results will be discoveries and innovations that we can hardly imagine. But of course, there is another way that this gift will touch generations to come, and that's through our teaching mission. Mr. Paulson has said that there is nothing more important to improve humanity than education. His support will guarantee that the next generation of global leaders taught at Harvard, no matter what their academic focus, will have the opportunity to have an unparalleled access to education in engineering and applied sciences. At Harvard, engineering and applied sciences are a fundamental part of a college deeply committed to the liberal arts and sciences. We educate citizens and citizen leaders for our nation and the world. This demands that we not only provide a rigorous education and training for the future of the engineering profession, but just as importantly, that we offer a broad-based technological literacy to every Harvard College student, regardless 
of their field of study. As our students move from Harvard to take positions of leadership across sectors and across the globe, this knowledge will prepare them to engage firsthand with the questions of a world that is being rapidly changed by an ever accelerating stream of technological innovations. Through this gift's support of research and teaching, Mr. Paulson will have a long-lasting and exponentially growing impact. On behalf of my C's colleagues and all students in Harvard College and the Graduate School of Engineering, sorry, Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, I'm all engineering today. <laughs> I want to express my sincere thanks to you, Mr. Paulson. Thank you very much. And now I'm delighted to turn the podium over to the Dean of the Harvard Business School and my friend, Nitin Noria. There have been uh, many superlatives that have been used to describe this gift today. Uh, magnificent, transformational, monumental, historic, game-changing. Uh, yet, for me, all these superlatives don't adequately capture this almost surreal and magical feeling that we all have at a moment where you know that we are all collectively deeply fortunate to be a part of something that is deeply important, uh, that will change our future in a way that we cannot fully grasp today. Yet, let me humbly offer a few thoughts from a different vantage points. For the John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, uh, I think this moment reminds me of a similar moment in Harvard Business School's history. Uh, this was a moment when George F. Baker gave us a gift that allowed us to build our campus in Alston, and the arc of our school and its evolution changed in a way that we could never have imagined. I think the same thing will happen for the John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences as a result of this gift. This gift will also have a profound impact on Harvard Business School. For more than 100 years, uh, we have been alone <laughs> on our side of the river, uh, with the athletics department being the only one that at least had people come and join us occasionally. So if we had to think of who we would love to have as our first neighbor, uh, who could we imagine better than a great school of engineering and applied sciences? The combination of business and technology has brought to the world remarkable, remarkable things. And this creates for Harvard Business School and for the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences a possibility to connect in ways that we have never been able to do before that I think will be transformational not just for each of our schools but for this university. A third vantage point that makes this gift remarkable is that for many years uh, Drew has been articulating this vision of One Harvard. And you, know, you often wonder when you articulate phrases like that, what do they mean and how do they come alive and how do people make meaning of them? Uh, to me, this is a great example of what one Harvard can bring. Uh, because clearly, the, what we each have in this university is the great joy of being a part of something that is uniquely great. But collectively, we can be so much better. And what this gift will enable is that collective possibility that Harvard represents. It is also a deeply important gift for our city. Boston has had a long history of being one of the real pioneers in innovation in our country. Starting from the whaling industry and on, uh, there have been many generations of great innovations that have come out of Boston. I think this gift will allow Boston to regain its mojo as a great city for innovation and hopefully make those other people on the West Coast tremble. We are ready. <laughs> uh, we are ready collectively to now make sure that we recapture the glory that we richly deserve to be seen as one of the great epicenters for innovation in the world. But most importantly, for each and every one of us, whether we are a part of Harvard or not, we are first and foremost human beings. And if you think about the challenges that our world faces, from trying to find a way to address the issues of climate change, to finding a way to allow us to live healthier and more productive lives, 
The problems that the world faces today cannot be solved without science and engineering. These have to be at the heart of the solutions that we create for the world. So more than anything else, John, this gift is a gift for humanity. I promise you that 100 years from now, when people look back and they think about the life-changing things that happened in the world, and we were to draw up a list of the 10 or 20 most important life-changing things, this will be a part of those life-changing things that happen for the world. And that, in some sense, is even beyond Harvard, the greatest impact that your gift will have. So on behalf of everyone here, uh, to you and your family, thank you for this magnificent gift. I will soon introduce him so that he can say a few words, but before I do that, I wanted to just take a minute to acknowledge and thank some very important people who may not have the opportunity to speak today, but who were very instrumental in bringing this gift to fruition. The teachers at Harvard Business School who inspired you, including uh, my former dean, Jay Light, and his predecessor, Kim Clark, our alumni and campaign leaders like Dick Spangler and John Hess, who encouraged you to get more deeply involved in the school. And most importantly, my colleagues in our external relations group, especially Josh Merrow, who worked with you for so many years to help bring this philanthropic goal of yours alive. It is now my privilege of introducing John Paulson and welcoming his family, uh, Jenny, his daughters, Danielle and Giselle, to this campus today. Uh, in a few minutes, he'll share in his own words what Harvard has meant to him and why he chose to make this amazing gift. But let me say a bit about what he has meant to Harvard and why I believe he exemplifies Harvard Business School's mission of leaders who make a difference in the world. His career trajectory in some ways is not atypical for a Harvard Business School student. He came to us after completing his undergraduate studies at NYU, where he distinguished himself academically graduating summa cum laude at the top of his class, while also showing an early entrepreneurial flair. I understand you found opportunities to secure goods in Latin America, even as you were a student, that could be sold profitably here in the United States. <laughs> his keen intellect and brilliant mind was evident again at Harvard Business School, where he graduated as a Baker Scholar, the highest honor given by the school to the top 5% of every class. Upon graduating from Harvard Business School, John started his career as a management consultant at BCG. He then quickly moved on to a career in finance, first at Odyssey Partners, then Bear Stearns, where he eventually became a director in mergers and acquisitions. Following a few years as a general partner at Gruss Partners, he left to start what is now Paulson & Company, a firm that he started with $20 million in assets and which now manages, manages more than $20 billion. He has achieved remarkable success in business, having repeatedly shown an uncanny ability to sense, seize, and then finally make good on amazing opportunities. Based on his own life story, John has always been quick to acknowledge his belief in the transformative role of education. He and his family foundation have been generous donors to several educational institutions, from NYU to the London School of Economics, to Harvard Business School. He has also given very generously to the Central Park Conservancy, underscoring his belief in public institutions that enrich our lives. His commitment to education and his ability to sense a great opportunity to make a difference were both evident in his decision to make this truly wonderful gift. John and Jenny, we're all deeply grateful for your extraordinary generosity. And I welcome you to say a few words. Thank you. Well, thank you, Drew. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, uh, Nitin, for those uh, very kind words. And thank you, everyone, for, for being here today. 
It is a, both a privilege and an honor for me to be here today. A privilege to be part of the Harvard community, a privilege to be in a position to help Harvard achieve its goals in engineering and science, and an honor to be a long-term partner with Harvard. Many people will ask, and I've asked myself, why Harvard, why me, why C's, why now, and why this amount? And I'd like to spend a few minutes to answer these questions. First, why Harvard? As, as Nitin said, there is nothing, quoted me before, there is nothing more important to improve humanity than education. Universities represent the highest form of education and are the ultimate repository of human knowledge. They provide both for the transfer of our accumulated knowledge from one generation to the next and for the expansion of knowledge through research on campus and through the activities of its alumni. As America's oldest university, for 379 years, Harvard has had a profound impact on our society, on the United States, and on humanity. Harvard has advanced knowledge in the arts and humanities, in sciences, in physics, mathematics, medicine, law, business, and many other areas. But to support this fundamental role, Harvard, as a private institution, needs the financial support of its alumni. Why me? Well, I'm happily a beneficiary of Harvard. I was fortunate to have completed my education here, receiving a master's in business administration in 1980. Harvard not only helped me with my tuition, but most importantly, made all its resources, relationships, and wisdom available to me in every way possible. And Harvard didn't ask or expect anything in return. Harvard's only aspiration was to provide me with the foundation, the tools, and the confidence to help me achieve my ambitions. There is no question that the support and education I received at Harvard was critical in helping me achieve success in my career. Now, I feel it is important for me to do something impactful and meaningful for Harvard. Why C's? In meeting with Dean Norea and President Faust, it was clear that a major priority for Harvard was to establish the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences in Alston as the next center for technological innovation. Harvard has articulated a goal of making C's a 21st century engineering leader, working closely with the business, medical, and other Harvard schools. While Harvard has offered engineering for many years, the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences was only recently formed in 2007. Why now? Since the formation of SEAS in 2007, the interest in SEAS has grown. The number of freshmen interested in pursuing a concentration in engineering and computer science has almost doubled since 2007 to equal 18% today. The faculty has continued to grow during this time, and Harvard has worked during this period to finalize its plans for C's, the C's building in Alston, a cornerstone of its expanding campus. Today, C's expansion and the Alston opportunity have converged and are becoming a reality. After meeting with Nitin and Drew over the past two years to discuss these plans, there is no better time than now to make this gift. Why this amount? 
The amount of this gift is large. <laughs> but so are the university's needs and ambitions for C's. To become a leading school in engineering and applied sciences, it is essential that C's have a substantial, unrestricted endowment to support faculty development, research, scholarships, and financial aid. Today, we'll mark the beginning of a new center of engineering and sciences. C's will lead innovation for the next century and beyond. Harvard School of Engineering and Applied Sciences will be transformational for Harvard, for Alston, for Boston, for the East Coast, for the United States, and for the world. Many people have thanked me today for this gift, and for that, I am very appreciative. But for me, today is an opportunity to thank Harvard. Thank Harvard for what Harvard has done for me, for what Harvard has done for many others, for what it's done for our country, for our society, and for humanity. Today is my way of saying thank you, Harvard. I'm Alan Garber, the provost, and um, let me just say that I spend a lot of my time making the case for C's, making the case for Harvard and Alston, making the case for Alston. I think I can just shut up right now. <laughs> John, that was the most beautiful statement about Harvard today, all that we hope to accomplish here in Alston with the business school, the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences and for the university going forward. Thank you very much. Um, I want to begin by just making a few comments addressed to my colleagues in the school formerly known as C's. <laughs> You've heard many times already today that this has been a school since 2007. Harry Lewis is sitting in the front row, and he will be quick to tell you, I am sure, that C's had been a school before, too, or its predecessors had been schools, and in between, it had been a few other things as well. And one thing I want to say to my colleagues is that today, I think you can feel confident that this really is a school, and it's permanent. <laughs> there is a caricature of Harvard that has persisted over many years. And um, as is usual with caricatures, there's an element of truth. Harvard is a university that when it comes to science cares only about basic science. There's a reason that engineering had not been a school from, for uh, such a long part of its history. Uh, applied sciences has sometimes been viewed by some people as less important than the basic sciences or the pure liberal arts. Entrepreneurialism has not always been admired here either, at least on this side of the river. But the truth has never been that simple. Harvard students and faculty have an irrepressible drive to succeed in many areas, to change the world. They have sweeping ambitions and determination. I came to Harvard, I'm embarrassed to say this, a little more than 40 years ago. And I had a classmate who was a concentrator in uh, applied math, uh, I believe, in what was then the Division of Engineering and Applied Sciences. And he started a company while he was here. And he felt the need to leave Harvard in order to really develop that company. And he was later joined by another one of my uh, classmates who was an applied math major, uh, again, in, in the Division of Engineering and Applied Sciences. And this was a university where they thought they could not succeed in this. Um, but it was out of a university 
that was known less for applied science and entrepreneurialism than for basic science and the liberal arts that Microsoft and several years later, Facebook were born. That popular image of Harvard, therefore, has some mixed elements of truth, but at best, it's incomplete, and it certainly lags reality. The Harvard of today is a great research university, providing unexcelled liberal arts education, of which engineering, as we have heard today, is a fundamental part in the 21st century. It's been known for its silos, but in fact today, this is becoming a highly collaborative institution, both collaborative within the university, across school boundaries, and outside the university. It has been known for conservatism and caution, but today it is increasingly entrepreneurial, open, and risk-taking. And more and more, the entire Harvard community is focused on solutions. Seize. Or, let me correct myself. The Harvard John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences is central to today's university. You've already heard how interest in engineering and applied sciences has exploded not only among concentrators, but among students in all fields. SEAS is going to be leading the new academic developments within Alston spearheading new collaborations and new connections, as Nithin has mentioned, with HBS, and something we haven't explicitly addressed today, but the soon-to-be-developed 36-acre enterprise research campus, where academia will meet business and where we will pose that threat to the West Coast that Nithin was referring to. This school epitomizes the great strength of Harvard, we build upon an incredibly strong foundation of tradition and a record of accomplishment that you've heard so much today as we embrace and shape the future. So congratulations to our colleagues in the Harvard John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Now, I'd also like to thank a couple of people. Nithin thanks some of the people who gave birth to what happened today, uh, and they include Dick Spangler, who's played a role for a very long time, Josh Merrow, and I'd especially like to thank Nithin himself, who has done so much to build the greatness, not only of Harvard Business School, but of Harvard University and the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. So thank you, Nithin. I would just like to offer a, a few brief words of thanks now to the Paulson family, to John, to Jenny, to Giselle, and Danielle. On behalf of the entire Harvard community, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> You've already heard about how this gift will enable world transforming research and advances in education in the coming years. But I want to add an additional dimension that is, in many respects, equally important to all of us. The message that you, John, have sent by demonstrating your belief in this school and in this university in this way. And you've explained that very well in your own comments. But let me add, John, that you are known for your success in predicting the future and in making decisions based on those predictions very successfully. So by your generosity, you are validating this vision for this school in the university. You have proclaimed to the world the smart money is on Harvard's School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. <laughs> And I want to emphasize something that the previous speakers have said. We will see immediate benefits within the university, within the school, from your generosity. If we are asked to evaluate what impact your gift has had, we will have to look many, many generations into the future. 
you are not only supporting the cures for disease, the answers to some of the world's most challenging problems. You are responsible for helping to develop those people who will be addressing the problems of today, tomorrow, and it is not an exaggeration to say centuries into the future. That's what you call a long-term investment. So thank you for that. The next Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg will be able to realize their dreams here as part of an ecosystem that you will have had a fundamental role in creating. Pulsing with the vitality of a growing engineering and applied sciences school central to the intellectual life of the university. With numerous collaborations with the nearby B School, a business school that's the home of tremendous creativity and uh, a different kind of intellectual ability, and as we all know, an unmatched capacity to get things done. This is a combination that is sure to produce and produce and produce. Generations of students and faculty will spread ideas that inspire people around the world. They'll make new discoveries. Those discoveries will be transformed into products, services, social ventures, and companies. They'll change the way we live, the way we interact with one another, and they may indeed help us find the ways to preserve our planet. Engineering, the physical sciences, the life sciences, and much else. Harvard is a leader, and this will be a new Harvard with new leadership that will give extraordinary gifts to the world. And what we give will be proudly linked to the Paulson name. We are deeply grateful for this gift which is indeed epical, for those of you who aren't sure that's spelled with an O, not an I, but maybe both senses apply. And I think this will prove to be a prescient investment, as you have done so well so often. So let us celebrate this new day for the Harvard John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences and, apply, uh, and applaud John Paulson for both his generosity and his foresight. <laughs>